Okay, so now we have a player running and we have some obstacles that we can crash into and explode for no reason. Um, so let, now let's add some uh, good items that we can pick up. And we're going to do this the same way. We're going to make a new blueprint of actor type and we'll call this BP item. And we'll open that up. We just call it an item so that we can add some different types of items anyway later. So first thing I'm going to do is add a scene component. And I'm going to make a little pseudo coin. So I'm going to add a static mesh. And the mesh I'm going to use is going to be this little torus. And I'm going to turn that so that it's 90 degrees standing on end. And I'm going to try to center it up a little bit more. So let's move it a little bit. We might need to change the grid to 5 here to try to get it centered. There it is. OK, so it's centered. And just to make it a little more fancy, let's open it up. And we'll change the material to the metal gold. So now we've got this shiny donut coin. Mmm, donut coin. Okay, so we'll go in. Let's make it a little more fancy. We'll add a point light to make it stand out. We'll put it down the bottom there. It's a little bright, so it's going to add to say 2,000. And we'll make it a little bit yellow. So now we have this nice little yellow light under our item. Okay, and you know, in a lot of times in games, you have items that rotate to make them stand out a little bit more. That's super easy to do, so why not? Let's go in and add a rotating movement component. And as you can see, the yaw is already set to 180. So if we simulate this, we get a nice, pretty revolving coin. Okay, so now that we have our coin, let's go and spawn these on our floor. So we'll go to our floor tile. And so the rocks we spawned in these three points, the coins I want to spawn a little bit differently. So I'm going to add a box collision. And I'm going to call this coin area. And I'm going to move it to the middle. And I'm going to scale it up, say 460, 460, and 2. And then I'm going to drag it up. So this is the area that I'm going to spawn my coins in. I'm just going to randomly spawn them in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another function. And I'm going to call it spawn coins. And this is going to be super similar to our spawn blocker. So we're going to add a child component. And this time the type is going to be BP item. Now for the transform, what we're going to do is we're going to use our um, coin area. So if we go under variables in our components, we can grab our coin area and we'll get the relative location of this. And then if we drag off of that and type random, or RND, there's this random point in bounding box. So this will allow you to get a random point in a bounding box, which is exactly what it says it does. So we're going to use that. And for the origin, we'll use the location of the coin area. And for the box extent, we'll just drag off of here and get the box extent of that area. So now we should be able to get a random point inside this coin area. And we'll just feed that right into our transform. And it's going to nicely convert that for us from location to transform. So now we have this function that spawns coins. So let's go and test it out. We'll go to our construction script. We'll hit Alt and temporarily disconnect our spawn blocker. And we'll hook up our spawn coins. So now if we go to our viewport and we compile, we get a coin. And it'll jump around to random spots. But with just one isn't very interesting. So let's go back to spawn coins. And in here, we'll just quickly stick in a for loop. And we could make this a variable and have different, you know, random numbers of coins. But for now, just prototyping, I'm going to say 0 to 5. So we always get 5 coins. And there we go, 5 coins. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my construction script. And I want to sometimes spawn coins, sometimes spawn blockers. So I will drag off of this. And I will add a switch. A switch on int. And this will just allow me to choose different outputs based on the number that's in this selection. So for blocker, I'll assign that to 0. I'll make it the default. And then for 1, I'll say spawn coins. 
Now, for this selection, I'm just going to throw a random integer and range in here and make it 0 to 1. So sometimes we get coins, sometimes we get box. So if we hit simulate, sometimes we get coins, sometimes we get rocks, which is exactly what we want. So if we go to our game and we play, we're getting coins sometimes, and we're getting rocks other times. And as you can see, I'm actually hitting into these coins. So the coins are blocking me, which we don't want. We want to be able to pick these up. So let's go to our character. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a variable called total coins. And I'll just make this an integer. And then I'm going to make a little utility function. I'm going to add a function, and I'm going to call this add coin. And this is simply just going to add coins to our total coins. So I'm going to want to set my coins. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my coins. I'll add one. And I'll assign that to my coin. So just a little utility function just to add a coin. So now if we go back to our item, we can select the mesh. It's set to block all dynamic. So let's set it to overlap only pawn. Then we can come down further and add a begin overlap. Now the begin overlap, we take the other actor, we'll cast our run character, make sure it's our player, and then call add coin. And after we add the coin, let's play a sound. And we'll do that at the actor location. And this is the one point where I'm kind of cheating. I said I was using everything from the uh, uh, starter content, but in this case, I'm actually going to use SFX score 01. And I kind of grabbed this from Tappy Chicken because it's a cute little scoring coiny sound. So I'm going to use that, but you guys can use whatever you want. You can always grab that from Tappy Chicken and migrate it over too, which is exactly what I did. Um, so we'll play that sound, and then we'll destroy ourselves. So there we go. So now we should be able to run around and pick up coins. There we go. Picking up, picking them up, picking them up. Be nice to spawn some kind of effect as well, maybe. But there we're getting coins. Okay, great. So while we've got this going and we're picking up coins and we have a running total of our coins, why don't we go and throw a quick little HUD on here? Just because... I think when you're prototyping something, when you when you throw in sounds and when you throw in a, a you know a little bit of you know information on the screen, to me it seems like it's a little bit more like a game. So I'm going to add a new folder called UMG, and we're going to use UMG. And now that we have UMG, it's super easy to do something like this. So let's just quickly go to user interface, and and this is going to be super simple. But I'm going to add a new widget blueprint, call it Run run HUD, and open that up. And like I said, super, super simple. Not going to get into crazy design or anything. I'm just going to throw a horizontal box in here. And I'm going to throw some text in. A couple texts. I'll select both of those. Go over to the font size. Make it a little bigger. Let's say 50. I'll grab the first one. I'll call this coins. The second one is going to be the number of coins, so just temporarily I'll put 999 in there. So that's how it's going to look. But what I'm going to do is, because this is super easy to do, I'm going to go to the text and I'm going to use the bind function, and I'm going to create a binding. And this will open up a little function. And what I can do is, I can get the player character, I'll cast that to my run character, And then, from the run character, I'm going to get that total coins variable. And then I'll just plug that in to the return value. So I'm going to get the total coins, and that's going to be what I use for my text in the spot here. So we'll compile and save that. We can just close that up, because we're not going to really do much more with it. And then we'll go to a run game mode. We'll go to the event graph, and then begin play. I'm going to make sure we open this up. So I'm going to create a widget of type run HUD. And then I'm going to add that to the viewport. 
make sure that's all connected in nicely. Compile and save. So now when the game starts, we should get that displaying on the screen. <clears throat> and I immediately die, of course. Okay, so now we've got the coins up there. And as we pick up coins, it's going to add coins to our total and immediately display them on screen. Super easy to do. So there we go. So now we've got obstacles that we can dodge. We've got coins we can pick up. In the next video, let's start making the course a little bit more exciting. <laughs>